everybody! Welcome to Phoenix Fiction Writers Podcast, episode 16, where it is our mission to create worlds out of words. I'm Hannah Heath, writer of YA Christian Speculative Fiction, author of The Terebinth Tree Chronicles, Skies of Dripping Gold, and Vengeance Hunter. I'm also the multimedia manager for PFW. And today I'm joined by my fellow PFW author E.B. Dawson and special guest Grace Crandall. We're going to talk about tips and tricks for writing short fiction, but first, Grace, welcome to the podcast. Yay! Hello! Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm Grace Crandall. I'm a blog at, called Sleepy Tiger Stories, and recent posts that there include posts of Dragon Slayer, um, Last Chance in the Lonely Planet, and The Screaming Earth. Thank you. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with it. And <clears throat> Beth, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, and uh, I'm E.B. Dawson, Editor-in-Chief at the Phoenix Fiction Writers. I write science fiction and fantasy. My two major series are The Creation of Jack and Lost Empire, but I also have uh, independent short stories out, including Government Man, Striker, Nomad of the Emirates, and as of today, Gifted. It's my newest. Yay! (laughs) I have, like, an hour set aside today for me to read that story, because I've been so excited. (laughs) Good. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it's special. It's so different. I'm not, every one of them are so different, but anyway, it's good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Super stoked. Uh, okay, so we can jump right into the news. So, uh, Grace, every month you have a, at the end of the month, you have a new short story coming out. So what what's your March story is called? Um, It's called Last Chance and the Missing Knife. Mm. What now? What genre is that exactly? Because I've been seeing some of your artwork roll through, and it looks awesome. Um. Well, I actually I would have called it science fiction until a couple of weeks ago when I stumbled across this really in depth conversation about what science fiction and fantasy both are, and I got confused by it. So, um, it's a space opera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there are spaceships. There are vampires. There's a lot of craziness going on, and it's part of the series started by Last Chance in the Lonely Planet. So it's it's they're tying together and it's just midway through the series. So having a lot of fun with it. (laughs) You mentioned vampires and now I'm like, oh, I must be the story (laughs) now. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. All right, so I, I'm going to link Grace's awesome blog below, so go make sure to check that out um, and read all of her short stories because they're super cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so we have some other cool PFW news uh, this month. The most exciting bit, well, they're all exciting, but the most <laughs> newest, I'm so eloquent today, is that <laughs> C. Scott Frank has joined the PFW ranks, so we now have a new <laughs> PFW member. We're very proud and happy and excited. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. He he is a sci-fi writer known for his stories Echo and Frequency, and they're amazing. So everybody should go read this. Yeah. Yeah, I love, well, first of all, I'm super excited that we have another science fiction writer. <laughs> <laughs> And it's cool that he has a very different take on science fiction from the so it's cool as we add new members to see our like our catalog kind of grow and everybody's got their little niche and um yeah he's definitely got some cool he traditional tropes and stuff in his work uh, and also some darker themes but like uh is very multidisciplinary in in the work and and what he brings into it and and all the different areas of science and stuff and science fiction so it's it's awesome so yeah you guys should check him out if you haven't. Yeah, yeah. He wrote Venison, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. I heard Zombie Deer and I'm like, this I need to read this now. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read I have no yeah, I haven't read Venison at all, but I've read Echo and Fantasy. So and those are separate. Um but yeah, he's he's oh, yeah. talented. That's so. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, venison on my Kindle too cuz I like you Grace. I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's Zombie Deer. What is this? I must read this." <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, He's been posting there's something like the chronic wasting disease or something oh, is like yeah. happening and he's like posting like, "Look, my story's coming true." I'm like, "Stop it." You're, you're <laughs> <scaring me>. like, <laughs> 
I don't want zombie beer. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like that to stay solidly in books and not in our world, please. (laughs) Yes, yes, stay away. Uh, She's enjoying that uh, marketing opportunity. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, yeah so and then Gri- or not grace uh beth you had an awesome story released today do you want to talk about that yes so gifted is officially published today um it is a superhero fantasy and and an urban fantasy i would say those are the two superhero urban primary genres um it's actually a rewrite of the first short story I ever wrote. Ooh. So like almost 10 years ago. So I wrote, I, I, I had this kind of image of it. And I wrote about 10 years ago, but it was very different. And then about a year, a little over a year ago, I rewrote it. Um, and so it's very special to me. I feel like, cause I've, yeah, in a lot of ways. Um, and it's been with me a long time, and I feel like it's finally come into its its own, <laughs> where it gets to meet the world. Um, yeah, but it's it's unique, and um, I love it. So it That's is out so in the world. Cool. Go read it. <laughs> I think it just occurred to me you are the first PFW person to publish a superhero story. So I feel like this is yeah. the beginning of an amazing era for us. <laughs> I feel like technically Kirsten markets two lives, three choices as having maybe not superheroes, but superpowers. So That's yeah, true. yeah, but yeah. So it's a it's a tough line because mine's not traditional superhero either. So, but that's like the uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> really not. Don't go into it thinking it's really traditional superhero, but it definitely has those elements. Because there's nothing else you could really categorize. If that makes any sense at all. (laughs) It's a different twist on it, I guess, is what you might say. It's not quite what you expect, but... Oh, I'm excited. (laughs) (laughs) I hear what you think. (laughs) Uh, So, last two pieces of news is that Aurelia the Nightwalker uh, by Beth Wangler is releasing on March 23rd. So, this is the third steward story in her series, and it's available for free on her newsletter. So, if you haven't subscribed to her newsletter, you really should, because these stories are really cool. And I'm particularly looking forward to this one, because the protagonist is blind, and I'm really <laughs> interested to see how she uh, works with this character. So, It's really good. Awesome. I read it, and at the climax scene, I almost cried. It's just beautifully crafted oh. at that moment. So, yeah, it's really good. You guys are going to love it. Oh, <laughs> And then last but not least is Janelle Garrett's the third volume in her Rhodesia Chronicles came out. Uh, It released on March 15th and it's called The Shade War. And this is kind of concludes her Rhodesia Chronicles and it looks incredible. Oh, man. That's awesome. (laughs) It's a unique series. It's very different. She's also someone who's, I think, expanding our PFW brand Mm -hmm. and the fantasy. She writes much more epic fantasy and um, and this one is Christian fantasy, but it's very non-traditional Christian fantasy, and it tackles a lot of really hard issues. Um, mm-hmm. But it's really well done, and the third one especially is very, it's packed with emotion, and it's really good. So, yep, yay, congratulations, oh. Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Go check that out. Yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. All right, so that's it for our news for this month. So now we can jump into story time where we share just interesting writing stories that happened to us in the month of March. So, Grace, do you want to go first? Um, well, I've been I've been trying out present tense, which uh, is ooh. weird. Oh my goodness. I keep like switching back every 3 sentences to past tense and so everything <laughs> but it's it's been a lot of fun. It's it's a really interesting it's a very small shift in your writing paradigm, but it, it actually changes the story quite a bit, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I salute you. I've never, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've never done present tense. I haven't. No. <laughs> it's like, <"How?" laughs> my first, my first, first person was quite a shift for me. Oh, which I think was Nomad of the Emirates. Um, 
because I do third person. And it's true, you get in that zone where you're like, this is, and I'm used to it. And suddenly you're like, oh, this is very different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious okay <clears throat> I um I have been learning the challenge of writing a novel the normal way after participating <laughs> in piano so in November I did national novel writing month out of the blue and and I won which I was half surprised that I actually did <laughs> it was really fun. and one thing though I feel like everybody talks about how great it is but like I <laughs> Maybe this is just me. I've seen a lot of negative things come out of it. I'm not saying that it's a negative thing, but I think for me, I'm so far into this now. Like I'm not, this isn't my first time writing a book. It, like I have my habits and, and, um, and cause this is like a career thing for me. I have my routine and all that. And, um, and so I've seen it really kind of threw off a lot of that stuff, like the, my routine of how, you know, of how I write and my marketing. And so after, so I wrote the, a full novel in two months, I did 50,000 in November and then I finished in December. And then I went to drafting this other book and now I feel like, Oh my gosh, it's taking so long. Why? <laughs> It's so long. And looking at my word count, being like, I should be ahead of it. Like it keeps going in my mind. Like I should be further along. I should be further along. And then I realized, no, 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 that was like that wasn't natural. <laughs> like, this is for me, and I'm right on track, and I shouldn't be stressed out. But it's very weird. It's and this is the normal process. I normally take a long time, but even just doing one novel really fast, suddenly like I feel like my brain's all confused. <laughs> it's good though and and it's I enjoy taking longer because I feel like I settle into the manuscript a bit more and I'm very much like I, I want things to kind of simmer um so so it's good in that sense but it's just funny it's like a weird aftershock of nano where I'm like oh I'm such a turtle <laughs> I'll be all right though oh man we well, believe in you thank oh, you <laughs> Uh, so my th this semester I have this new job where I am basically I'm a supplemental instructor for an English 100 class. So there was a student who was working on her paper and she was getting really frustrated with it. So I just kind of sat down next to her and I'm like, hey, it's going to be okay. You can do this. And so she just kind of looks up at me and asks, okay, well, when did writing get easy for you? <laughs> and I was staring at the student thinking, oh, no, like, I know as an instructor, I'm supposed to be like, it gets easier, it gets better, I swear. But I was like, I, I can't lie to the student. <laughs> so I just had to tell her it doesn't get easier. Like, writing is always really hard. You get better at it, but it's always hard. And that was just a really good reminder to myself because I feel like I've been writing for a really long time. So sometimes I get frustrated that I still struggle with it every time I sit down to write. So that was a nice kind of slap in the face that like, oh, look, you've come up really far, so you should be proud of that. But also don't give yourself unrealistic expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully my yeah, answer was, helped that hurt. student and didn't send her into panic. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it like an academic paper or was it a creative writing project? It was an academic paper, um, which... I still struggle with, even though that's literally like my job is to make it easier for people. But it's like every type of writing is hard. So, oh yeah, yeah. It's effort to communicate, and I think, well, especially academic, that's like heavy, like the amount of thinking it takes, and then being able to communicate that in words in a specific format and sound professional about it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it takes effort for sure. So, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> so. Yay, story time. Uh, now we can move right into our discussion, which is we're going to talk about, uh, we're just going to give everybody all of our amazing tips for writing short fiction. So everybody <laughs> get your pen and paper out and take notes because we have all the knowledge because we all write short stories um, <laughs> and just short fiction, no novellas and short stories and all that fun stuff. So first I wanted to kick us off by asking what exactly counts as short fiction um, because I know there are all these different categories there's short stories novelettes novellas uh, what's the difference is there a difference should we care <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I tend to think of any story that I can absorb really comfortably in a couple of hours or less is just that's short fiction it's 
not a novel or a series Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah that's that's pretty much my vague definition of it i've stumbled across a couple helpful charts of like word counts and proper terms but yeah yeah that's that's how i generalize it i feel like that's great because i think that's the layman's like understanding you know what i mean because sometimes the terminology gets confusing when you actually look at it but most people i think relate to that of oh okay I can absorb it when I'm sitting or a couple hours. When I think about short fiction, I tend to think, well, short stories and novelettes. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I exclude novellas. <laughs> I think I haven't, I haven't actually written one. And for some reason, like, it's kind of like go big or go home. Like, it's either a short story or it's a novel. <laughs> why you would want to do one in the middle. <laughs> the phase that I'm in I'll probably write a novella before the end of my career um I think that's just an awkward length but I to from from what I understand novellas are like 20,000 to 50,000 ish in there because 50,000 is where the novel begins so it's really like just a very short novel and then and just I don't think this maybe is technically accurate but in my mind (laughs) short stories are somewhere like between 2,000 10,000 words um, and then if you get a little longer, it's a novelette, which is a weird word, but I like, I like the distinction between short story and novelette because it is, it can be quite a bit of length longer if you do a novelette. So anyway, that's my interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have this weird, like mental categorization that Short fiction is anything that's under 40,000 words, and short stories are anything that's under 10,000. Um, but that's technically not correct. I went and Googled it because I was super curious. And short stories, turns out, is between 2,000 to 7,500 words. Novelettes are 7,500 to 18,000. Novellas are 18,000 to 40,000 which is just weirdly specific. I don't know who came up with this, so I'm kind of (laughs) hesitant to be like, yes, this is the law now. (laughs) Um, So I don't, I personally am not a huge fan of the term novelette. Um, It just, it seems weird to me and it seems really hard to use and seems like it might confuse people because I don't know how many people understand that that's a thing or even know what it is. Um, I think, Grace, didn't you um, mention that you had marketed Ashes as a novelette? Yeah, yeah, it technically is one, and I didn't know the word until I started marketing with it, which might have been why I felt so awkward using it, (laughs) but I'm like, yeah, this is my novelette thing, um, yeah, (laughs) and it it felt weird, it felt weird, it might have, it, the distinction might have been helpful, but it, it did feel weird to me, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) so that term, I think it just sounds too similar to me to towelette, so every time I just think, like, look, I wrote a towelette, and then that just doesn't make sense. That's such a, like, convenience items, right? Yeah. If you're on the airplane, you get a towelette, it's, like, good service. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Would you I like- don't know about I don't know about those lines either because I feel like I've heard them different before and like one I was looking at submitting to an anthology at one point and they were like short stories and then they said like fifteen thousand and under which I was like that's quite long <laughs> but they didn't distinguish it and I was like I'm good with that because mine's you know longer than because I uh, yeah and I have a lot of my short stories hit longer than five thousand oh, and. Yeah. Go- Seven seventy five hundred ish. I like that's like a really sweet spot for me. <laughs> but I'm like I never thought of them as novelettes at that length. I don't know. I think they're all made up. These numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we should right. just count it. It's twenty eight. I don't know. Fifteen thousand letters. <laughs> a short story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> yeah. And as soon as Grace mentioned, like, something you can absorb within a couple hours, it's like, yes, that's that's the definition now. So I'm going to go with that from here on out. <laughs> that makes sense. Sweet. Yeah. That's a good one. We'll stick. <laughs> all right. So next question is, why did we each choose to write short stories? Because all of us have quite a few outs. Um, and it, short stories are something that a lot of authors just don't even bother with. So why short stories for us? 
yeah i for me they're kind of like a snack or a palate cleanser as a as a writer and a reader um <clears throat> i think reading can take a lot of work and effort um uh, because you have to devote that's why you know it's easier to watch a movie than read a book you have to devote the time to to get into the world and read the words and stuff um and sometimes it's nice to have a quick read that's still rich and thought-provoking um and i found especially after if i finished a book that took a lot of effort then uh, there's this tendency in me like oh i want to read something short and imaginative that i can just digest really quickly um and then as a writer, one of the things I love most about them is I can explore all these fun ideas in a short amount of time. And um, there's like, I think there's something really special about short stories that like they kind of have to be completed in the reader's imagination in a way that's much different than novels because a novel, you really flesh the idea out and you, you know, you pretty much exhaust all the options, not completely, but uh, by the time the reader's done with it, um, they they remember a lot of your words you know what I mean they've spent that much time with it and a short story you kind of plant the seeds of the idea and the characters and really it's so much easier for the readers to take it and kind of think about it afterwards and make it their own and I think that's it's a unique format for that so that's one thing I really enjoy about it it's really cool yeah yeah I I started writing short stories because I can't finish novels <laughs> <laughs> I've tried, <laughs> um, but the time the time commitment was mm. as a writer was just so much nicer, and I wanted to be able to just be able to finish something in a couple weeks and then move on to something new because it was just it was fun for me that way. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, I love writing short stories because of how concise and compact they are. Um, like Beth mentioned, they're kind of a good snack. And for me, yeah. as a college student, I'm having to read all of these like college textbooks. And then by the end of the day, my brain is just not wanting to read anymore. So short stories are a little bit more like, oh, I can actually read this and keep my love for reading alive <laughs> while dying in college. So it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of made me like it as a reader and that's kind of why I went into it as a writer and then I found because I'm a very kind of go big or go home kind of person I really like the immediacy of short stories it's really appealing to me like Beth mentioned you just kind of plant the seeds and then just let them grow and the short stories allow you to go really deep and personal with characters in a really short amount of time. Um, and I just really like just how instantaneous all of that is. Um, and it's also vastly improved my writing skills, which is a huge plus. So, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, so as for writing short stories, what are some of the best lessons that short fiction has taught us as far as writers? That was well, weirdly phrased. <laughs> <laughs> sense <laughs> um for me it's it's really taught me to value positive stories with happy endings because like when I'm reading short stories a lot of them just end really sadly and it's really depressing and I have a tendency to end st short stories by like killing everybody <laughs> I found out <laughs> and like I realized okay that I wouldn't want to read 10 of these in a row and so I had to start actually working towards making these positive and uplifting and it was a lot of work and it made me realize okay this is this type of story has a lot of value and a lot of meaning so it it kind of taught me to I don't know view stories differently I guess almost mm. but that, that was really cool for me yeah that is cool I do think it's easier to end with a cliffhanger or something painful <laughs> like as an author <laughs> <laughs> so the dark route to shock or bring out that emotion versus it's, it takes a lot more work to get the satisfying happy ending yeah <laughs> makes yeah. sense it's good to go for though um <clears throat> I think it's it's changed the way I look at scene structure and pacing my novels even um I think sometimes now and it took me a while to learn short stories. And I've seen now after I have how it's influenced my novel. Sometimes now I even look at my manuscript in terms of like short story length. Like I'll be like, oh, I'm one short story away from the climax or like it's because <laughs> I 
learned how to do that arc within that, you know, that period of 5,000 to 10,000 words. And so now I can approach that to the different scenes in my novel. Like you can break it apart and be like, okay. So um, it just, I think it changed the way that I approach um, my novels in that way, which is interesting. That's what taught me a lot of other lessons too, but <laughs> that's <laughs> It's really cool. Yeah, I think that's the same for me, Beth, is that it's really taught me how to better handle story structure, just because everything is so compact in a short story. If even one thing is off, if a character arc is off, if something in the plot is off, it's immediately very obvious. (laughs) So as a writer, it's kind of helped me see like, oh, this is exactly how you have to place these things. Otherwise, it just gets all wonky, Um, which in novels you can definitely notice those errors but it's a lot harder because you have to sift through so much more information to find what's wrong Mm -hmm. so that's been cool for me I also I think the biggest thing for me for short stories is that they've really shown me how to wield words in a very purposeful manner previous to writing short stories I understood that everything that I put on a page needs to have purpose but that was really magnified the more when I started writing more short stories. Um, So not only words, but like word choice, word placement, um, what words you pair with which and when, um, all of these things that I hadn't really thought about, but because short stories are so compact, readers really hone in on specific things. So you have to make sure that everything's in place so that you can guide your reader where you want them to go. And word choice has a huge impact on that. So that I think for me was probably the best thing that I learned as far as writing short fiction yeah yeah definitely you you don't want to waste anything in a short story it's it's about you packing in and I think for me one of the biggest lessons that I learned was to kind of amp up the emotion and meaning like you really can get so much emotion and meaning in a short story and um, and I didn't th- really think you could before. I was like, oh, there's not enough room. But uh, when you learn, I think, like Ken was talking about, where to put those sentences and like when you learn the skills of that, then then you can um, you can put a lot more meaning in than I think you would think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, totally, totally. It, it kind of teaches you how much the sentence structure counts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because it's uh, even in, I think, uh, because you have to give the information to the reader, right? You know, they need to understand what's going on. Um, And I think technique and sentence structure allows you to do that in the least amount of space as possible. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's, and then you can get to the important part of the story. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. So yay for us learning lots of lessons from short fiction. But now I'm curious, what have been some of the biggest (laughs) challenges when it comes to writing short fiction? Uh, So many. (laughs) 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 Um, It's hard because every story could be so much longer and larger. Um, For for me, the real challenge is finding that snapshot that you want to show. Because every character has an entire life, right? And... Um, and, but the snapshot is the heart of the story. It's why you're telling it. So, um, you want to find kind of that intersection of where they're, you know, when, when do you start the story? You start it a certain amount before the inciting incident and, and all that, but just balancing, I think to, um, where you place them and can affect how you introduce the world building and all of that. Um, and so finding that sweet spot, what for me was really helped open up, my ability to write short stories because before that I would kind of like type out some ideas but they didn't have that spark you know what I mean like they were just kind of flat and it felt more like an introduction to a novel than a short story which they're very different um and so I think I found that place of like no I need to jump ahead almost to where the climax would be so it's the beginning of the novel and the climax all within (laughs) the short story and it's you like skip all the middle part that you would normally do as a novelist which is very um it's very unnatural at first but it actually gets really really fun because you're like okay introduce the character now I can jump to the climax (laughs) um so 
but there's so much you have to do in that time and that small amount of time um, introducing the characters, making the reader care about them, understand what's going on, understand the world building, understanding the stakes, and you move right into the rising action. Um, so I, my very first at the beginning, like I said, I almost would write it as the first chapters of a novel. And I, I tended to not go far enough. I'd have an idea and I'd have like, oh yeah, this person's interesting. Da, da, da. And I'd write like 2000, 3000 words maybe. Um, and be like, okay, that was kind of interesting. But I, I would just, I'd stop writing for some reason. I would think like, okay, I think that's, and that story's <laughs> over. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, it's okay, it's interesting. And I, it sounds funny, but when I started stretching those ideas out of like, okay, what if I went to the next scene, what would happen? I saw the stories come alive a little bit more. And so that's when I found my sweet spot really is around 5,000 to 7,500 words. And that's like, the story would really start coming alive. And then I'd get to a climax and I'd get to the the more, you know, meaty parts of it. And then I'd have time to do even a small resolution. And so for me, it was learning um, to write a bit longer short stories, made them come alive. Some people do flash fiction. I cannot do... Oh. Or 1,000, even, I know there's short stories, you know, people write short stories, there's 2,000, 3,000 words. I cannot fit, and maybe I will someday. <laughs> right now, I cannot fit, and you know, to make me happy with it. Um, and I, that's where I learned, I have to draw it out a bit more, make it a bit longer, and then I can fit in the solid introduction, go right into the rising action, get a climax and a resolution. And I think for me, finding that sweet spot uh, was a challenge, but super rewarding, so... Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's my I'm like, oh wow, that's so good. I don't know if I can say anything <laughs> after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, my biggest challenge with short fiction is I have such a hard time deciding what information to include in a story. Um, because for me, when I start writing a story, there's all this background information and there's like these story settings that are super cool and world building and awesome magic systems. And I just, I want to share it with everybody. And I have to find ways to reel myself back in because if I do put all of that in the short story, it muddles things. And like Beth said, it's all about kind of starting near the climax and just getting there as quickly as possible really while still packing a punch and so if you include too much information it's just almost impossible to do that um and I think another reason that this is so hard and I just was realizing this the other day is that we as readers have been conditioned to think a certain way about stories we like knowing all of the information and we like knowing it pretty much up front because even though people complain about info dumping, we're used to it. Like, we're used to movies starting out with, like, and here's the world building, and this is the villain's backstory, and the same thing with books, too. And so when you start reading short stories or writing them, you realize, oh, I'm not supposed to reveal everything. And our brains are so conditioned to, like, need instant gratification. We need to know everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes it even harder, I think, um, not only as a writer – or and as a reader because there's this added stress like as writers we think we have to put this information in here because readers are going to be upset if we don't so it's really <laughs> hard to like figure out oh what do I include here hilarious <laughs> I think I yeah. I think I tend towards the other way <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I have this tendency to be really subtle. I, I I can see that too, though. That it depends on the story. I have a tendency to be very subtle, and I I have a couple of beta readers who like hate that, and they're always like, "I don't understand why you want to tell me this right now," and I'm like, "Just wait, wait, it'll be fine." <laughs> it cracks me up though. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's the worst because then you get reviews <laughs> you can't win because you get reviews and you're like oh there was too much info dumping and then another review is like I didn't get enough information it's like what do you want from me <laughs> that's so tough because every person's mind works differently and and there's some people like I mean that's why you have I don't know, like back in school all the standardized testing and you get high scores in comprehension and low scores in this or that because our brains function differently mm -hmm. and some people are really good at 
taking the subtleties and then like they know exactly what's going to happen and the next person is like i'm so confused like i can't understand what's happening and finding that balance where the most people can read it and understand it and 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 see the world is really really tricky yeah yeah i think part of that um i think part of that is probably genre sensitivity yeah like, yeah because i know for, for me, sure yeah yeah, because I know for me, it's like, if I don't read a ton of a genre, and then I read something that has, like, just hints of, you know, common tropes in that genre, but not for me, it's just, I, I don't understand what's going on, but somebody else is just, oh, yeah, totally. Whereas I can read a fantasy story that just has little hints of things going on, it's like, oh, yeah, I totally get this, because I've spent my whole life reading these stories, so I know how it goes. Right. <laughs> so, yes. That's, no. That's but... part of it. I'm not sure. <clears throat> That's a great point. No, it's true. I think that's why tropes help you. You know, yeah. I think I think some there's still it's I don't know that it's a huge thing, but I think there's still some authors who think tropes are a bad thing, but they actually really, really help in those instances because the readers in the genre they're prepared for things like that. You use them to your advantage and you can build off of them and then your readers can quickly understand what's happening. So it's a very good yeah. So they're yeah, they're really good in short stories too for that yeah. reason. Yeah, they, they can really help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the hardest thing for me in short stories is actually getting a character arc mm. and some sort of action in the same story. Because <laughs> I oh. tend to do one or the other. <laughs> like, here's somebody you don't care about, but they're in mortal peril. Or you know, <laughs> five pages of somebody's internal discussion with themselves. <laughs> so it's like actually finding a way to build both of those up is really hard for me. But... But it's a fun, it's a fun kind of art, so. <laughs> it is very tricky, for sure. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into our tips section. What are some tips that we can share with people to help them write good short fiction? I would say every scene needs to accomplish multiple things, um, which I say this for, for novels too, but I mean, it's super more important for your short story. So your opening scene it needs to distinguish your character, reveal the world, and begin the plot. So you have to, you can't, you just need to start doing multiple things at once. <laughs> you can't really waste time being like, okay, this is the character, but we still have no idea really what where they live and, and what's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and it'll get your short story moving quickly if you can find, so um, when you choose your opening scene, it's like, what what is the character doing that could reveal something unique about them, something unique about their world? And that could foreshadow the plot. And it can be tricky. That might sound like, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you exactly how. <laughs> I think you get better at it. And I think you can, especially if you um, go back and edit your stories, um, you can start to see like, like, oh, wow, I can cut out this scene because it doesn't do all those things. And then that's when you kind of start learning for yourself like, oh, okay, 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 um, this is how it works. So, yeah, you need to multitask from the very beginning. You know, your very first scene needs to um, be distinct in those areas where people can see kind of like, oh, okay, this is where we're at, and get oriented really quickly so that then they can um, enjoy the story and move forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. That's not something I actually think about a lot but I'm gonna have to start being a little bit more uh, involved with that part of the story because that would help a ton <laughs> <laughs> good I, I hope it does help <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah yeah I tend to get all tied up in the ending because like mm -hmm. for me that's that's like the most important part of the story it's like you have to have like this solid the solid conclusion and mm -hmm. this especially like the very last line it's like the very last line has to just give you this feeling of oh wow that that all tied up that all ended that all finished and mm -hmm. it's it's really satisfying like that's my favorite part of the short story and it's it's the part it's like I can be uncertain about every other part of the short story that I'm writing but if I know I have a good last line it's like okay I I can move forward with this so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like the last line is almost more important than in a novel. Like, uh, you have so much more time in the novel to close it off and do the, you know, denouement. And to me, the novel, it's like the last 
page or a couple paragraphs is like a huge, but it's true. It's a short yeah. story. I feel you on that one. A lot of times for me, it's like last line or two are important about, cause it, that's where it sparks into the reader's imagination. They've spent this small amount of time with you. And then suddenly the last line is where it, it kind of comes alive. Just yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> Unique <laughs> aspect. Like magic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Hannah, I want to hear your tips. <laughs> yes, okay. So, uh, oh, okay. So, for short stories, for me, just going back to the go big or go home thing, I think it's really important for short stories is to be bold. I think so many writers think this is a short space, I can't fit too much in here. But I think the opposite. Like, you need to pack as much emotion and as much meaning into the space as possible. Um, so you ha can't be afraid of just really digging in and going deep into a short story because just because it's short doesn't mean it has to be shallow. So go for it. <laughs> um, and I did really like, Beth, you had said something earlier about starting near the climax. And I think that's really important. So many short stories kind of start where you would start with a novel and you just cannot do that <laughs> with a short story. It's just not yeah. going to work. So don't waste time on that. Start as near... <laughs> do the climax as possible. Otherwise, you're just going to find yourself writing a novella and that's not what you, or not a novella, a novel, and that's not what you were originally trying to do. So, <laughs> so that's super important. And then also for me, I think short stories are cool in that they give you room to experiment and do things that you wouldn't usually do in a novel. And again, because stories are short, people are a little bit hesitant to do that. But I think one of the things that makes short stories so cool is that you can try all of these different things. So feel free to experiment, even if it seems too weird to pull off, because some of the weirdest, coolest pieces of fiction are short fiction, like um, The Velt by Ray Bradbury. Have you guys read that? I don't think I have. Oh. He's a so. he is and this story <laughs> is just it's so weird but somehow it works and it's just incredible um wow. so I think you need to be willing to take risks in short fiction that you wouldn't usually take even in a novel um because that does it makes all the difference if people are going to spend 30 minutes on a story you only have that much time to grab their attention so you have to wow them um yeah. and then also editing <laughs> 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 um you, you guys earlier were talking about like where where you every scene needs to have purpose and multiple um points to it and if it doesn't you have to be willing to go and take it out mm -hmm. or just um delete it write a new one um keep that original scene but just completely rework it um because of how small short stories are that can seem really intimidating because editing a scene means you're like basically discarding a third of the story and it's very <laughs> heart-wrenching like oh no <laughs> there goes my story what am I doing but I do think editing makes a short story or breaks it so you have to be willing to go back and ask yourself with each scene why is this scene here what am I trying to convey with this um, does this really need to be here is this helping uh, conclude the story is this working for all of the themes is this staying on track and if the answer is no to any of those questions you have to go and edit it otherwise things are going to fall apart yeah yeah, yeah. very much so it's, uh, yeah I think it's much easier for readers to see the structure of a short story than a novel I think there's more room in novels to have different um you know plot points, different kind of structure and, and architecture for the novel. There's a lot you can play with. Short stories, less so. I do think there's room for to do your own thing and, and to kind of make points by the choices you make in that. But I agree that it's um, you want to be really clean and you want your choice to be super intentional. So if you go and you're like, yeah, okay, you know, maybe that doesn't conform to the normal, but it, it furthers this point in this theme because I'm choosing that and then that's one thing. But if it's just sloppy and, <laughs> and it's, you know, you want to tighten it up and you want it to be clean and um, to enforce your themes and enforce the plot and all of that. And, and uh, getting eyes on it is super helpful for that. You know, watching your, if you have beta readers, their reactions to, to things um, that really helps me know their emotional reactions, if I'm on track or not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I liked your point, Hannah, about being bold. I had that in my notes too, and I just hadn't said it yet. But I think it's a super like make the stakes high and pour the emotion in because you do. You only have a short time, and it, it's like the difference between your story being memorable versus being like, okay, well, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So, and that was another thing early on that I was just, because I was writing it like the beginning of a novel that your stakes aren't that high yet. And so there wasn't that. And when I started skipping it to like, no, this is the climax and there needs to be, then you, you can start pouring the emotion on from the first scene um, and really going deep with it. And that's when I think your stories have an impact on people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I think even one of my editing techniques is after I'll go through and read my first draft and then I'll make a list of things like this is a theme I really want to make sure comes through. This is a character arc that I really want to make sure happens. Um, this is a character that I really want people to feel this specific way about. And so I'll literally write it down on an index card and then I'll go back and read the story and I'll like cross things out if it's contradicting <laughs> what I have on the index card or make notes like you need to amplify this scene to help with this and it really helps me stay on track so if anybody ever gets lost I do highly recommend doing that, <laughs> that that's an awesome tip Man, I'm gonna use that <laughs> <laughs> um and because I'm a you know exploratory writer a trailblazer I usually find by the end is when I find but what the story's really about and like oh these are the themes like you Hannah and then at that point I go back and relook at the beginning and be like what can I add here that's going to reinforce that theme or what can I change about you know their the character's thoughts that can foreshadow and then that's when you really start to see it get stronger um and it's just so nice because it's so sh- it's just a, such a short little amount to work with it's not like <laughs> thousand words <laughs> Yeah, I I don't mind editing short stories nearly as much as I mean it's much less work, so it's hard to compare the two. But yeah, 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 and I mean because it's such a small space too, you can play with so much more. Yeah, it's just like you can you can add in weird ideas that you just it would feel it would feel strange to put in a novel, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Really like. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think I do that sometimes with things I'm not ready because it'd be like if I had this in a novel, I'd have to explore all the implications. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop it right here in this short story, and the readers are gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking that's how a lot of us use short stories, like. For me, my Terebinth Tree Chronicles, they're spinoffs from my book. Um, Grace, you mentioned that your short stories are in a series. Um, so yeah. you're allowing yourself to continue exploring. Um, I know that, Beth, you do that with your... Um, ah, I'm blanking on the name. The Traveler right. s- series? Oh, yes. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Yes, I, I forgot about those. I do... I just heard- <laughs> I started a series with my short stories and there's two different, I forgot about those. Cause those are like, those are like backstory to characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so they kind of have a different flavor to them. I have this whole stab. I mean, I have a series on it and then it's just taking a snapshot from that character's life outside of the novel. But then I've started a series. Well, and I have, I will have another one. I started a short story series for government man. Um, the series yes. is the light behind shadows and so I now have two in there and it's a very different, it's very fun though. <laughs> like, <laughs> cause I, I had never intended to write a follow up to a government man. And I've, I had a couple of friends who were just like, it needs to be a novel. And I was like, no, I'm not, who knows, maybe one day, but right now it's not going to be a novel. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> but suddenly it was like, I could just write a second one, like a second, you know, episode. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it and there's going to be at least a third one. We'll see how many more. And I have another short story series kind of planned and it's very different. I enjoy it cause it's very different. Even though, even if it ends up the length of a novel, it's the approach to it is just very different. Um, cause you write, they're like episodes within that. So anyway, yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that goes back to my original issue of like, oh, no, what do you include? That's the nice thing about short stories is you can write one and then know that you can do spinoffs later on. Like, yeah. Vengeance Hunter, I love that short story so much. Grace, your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome. 
<laughs> um, yeah, that's how I feel about it too. So I'm like, oh, I love this story so much. And so after I finished it, I was like, I instantly knew I want to go back to this. So I'm going to write a novella just because I loved it so much. So I love that about short stories. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, yes. it, it's fun. It's almost freeing. It's, uh, I almost feel irresponsible. Like, oh, yes. This, I'm not going to write a full novel. I'll just write seven episodes of short stories. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, che- it feels like cheating, but. Uh. <laughs> If it's fun to read, then it's not cheating. I know. <laughs> yes. Readers cheating too, and we're all in yep. together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. So, what are some of the most common pitfalls to avoid when writing short fiction? Let's do some cautionary tales here. Um, <laughs> So for me, I think the biggest thing that I see is people trying to fit way too much into a short story. Um, Generally speaking, short stories should only focus on one plot point and one character. As soon as you start adding more, it just becomes a huge mess. So you definitely can have more than one character, but if you focus on them too much, then everything just starts like unraveling and it's a huge mess. So just... Don't don't do that for your own sanity. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Um, And I think also sometimes writers approach short fiction writing like they would a novel. And as we've talked about before, that just doesn't work. You can't do that. Otherwise, you're just going to end up writing a novel. So unless you want to, (laughs) then don't, don't, you can't write them the same way. So you just have to be very intentional about reminding yourself, this is not a novel. You can't write this the way I would other things. So just constantly have that in the back of your brain and you should be okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 I've, for me, I've read a lot of short stories, none of them by indie authors, luckily, Um, (laughs) most of them old, but it's like, if you finish a short story and you're wondering, okay, why was this written? Mm. Then that's that's not what you want to leave a reader with. You want to have you want to have a point. Like if that point is a whole character arc or just one little cathartic moment, they're all cool points, but it has to have some reason to exist. Like there has to be a reason this short story exists. There has to be a reason I'm reading it. Otherwise, it's it's just hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think along with that, I've seen a lot of short stories play it too safe. So they become unmemorable, which we talked about a little before. And that's where it's like nothing really happens and there's no major arc and there's no major um, twist or, and so it's, it's not that it's badly written and it's not that persons may, the character's uninteresting, but, um, but it's like, you're not going to get to know that character in that short amount of space the way you would a novel. And so that's why you need to use the tools of, um, to make it distinct. Um, so I think that's where we get back to making the bold choices of stuff where it's like, no, you would normally take a whole novel to do that. Or I think things that I used to think as, um, a lot of things I think I used to see other authors do, um, but I never did. I employ them in my short stories much more than my novels. Like I have a very different style with that, but in my short stories, it's, it's much more about the shocking twist and like the punches. And, Cause I think it works well in that medium. Um, and it becomes really fun. And that's what, um, it's no, not that they're sensational, but they almost are, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just like, it's, it's such a great medium for doing that. And, um, for getting that reaction uh, getting reactions from people and making them think about it long after they put it down. So, um, so yeah, don't play it too safe and don't, you know, it's okay to branch out from maybe what you normally write and to do things you never thought you'd do before, um, just to play around with it and to see how readers respond and all that. Um, and, and it really can be like a playground, you know, where you try out, like we talked about, try out new ideas. Um, there definitely needs to be an arc, I would say. It's, it should be a static glimpse into your character's life on an average day. Like there needs to be something distinguishing about it. There's an arc or there's something unusual that happens that makes them make choices. There should be, um, really it needs to be a glimpse of your character's life at a moment of change, decision, or tragedy, or something like that, that makes it unique, so... And bold and do all the things. Yep. (laughs) Yes. 
Yeah, and I think also the last thing that uh, unfortunately I've seen some writers do is it's important not to underestimate short stories. I think people hear that term and they think, oh, it's short, it's so tiny, it'll be easy, because it's only like 5,000 words, it's fine, Mm -hmm. but that's not how it is. (laughs) Short stories can be really hard to write, so just make sure you are going at this with a level of respect and understanding that, sure, (laughs) this is going to be a lot of work and you have to be willing to put time into it, and like we keep saying, you can't play it safe, so if you're going to go into a short story, do it seriously. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes yes very much so <laughs> the stranger's business <laughs> <laughs> so i think one of the best ways to learn how to write is just to read so mm-hmm. let's talk about some short fiction recommendations that we have um definitely the entire anti-heroes collection because <laughs> i'm almost finished with that and it's beautiful <laughs> 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 but yeah. really enjoying all of the short stories in there. They're just they're works of art. Um so a couple of my favorite short stories. I mean, everything by Ray Bradbury. Yes. Every, yes. every short story <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> <laughs> is beautiful and amazing. Um, but more specifically, I recently listened to Operation Haystack by Frank Frank Herbert. And it was it was really interesting. That was a really fun very active short story. I really enjoyed that. Lots of spies and plots and everything. Um, and Knife Dance by Megan Will and Turner. It's an add-on to a series that she wrote. Um, that was beautiful. And also The River by Flannery O'Connor. Um, very depressing, but that was very, very beautiful <laughs> as well. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought it was funny because I think we all mentioned Ray Bradbury in some <laughs> this thing, which we had we did not coordinate. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it's true. I think I think he had this quote that was something like, "If you if you write fifty two stories in a row, it's impossible that they're all bad or something like that." And mm-hmm. the first time I heard that, I was like, "He's crazy." He was a very prolific writer, but now mm-hmm. I'm like, I know what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> and one of yeah. my, I think. And thinking about it, I think uh, it really does has impacted how I write short stories. I read his story all summer in a day in high school, and it really like kind of blew my mind. And I think in all the ways we were talking about too, um, where it just planted the seed where I couldn't stop thinking about it even after it was done. And it was it's really like quite sad, but it's just packed full of emotion, and it really impacted me. And it's much more about you know the characters. Um, the character arc and their emotions than necessarily about really jazzy science fiction or anything like that, though it is in a science fiction setting, but, um, loved it. And I recommend it. Um, uh, top side by J E Karazi is, is good. It's a action science fiction. One of my favorites by her short read. Um, and then uh, Beth Wangler's short stories are beautiful and unique. So the Lake of living water, I recommend it's, very it has c.s lewis vibes it's Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an escape into beautiful fantasy and then Mm -hmm. um one of her newer ones the temple builders too is really i really really enjoyed it it's very unique in its approach and i think the content it includes because it's kind of a mix it's like a more more mature chronicles of narnia um and some of the themes it explores are just uh beautiful so um and then i'll I know Hannah's going to say this too, but I, I love uh, your story, Ashes, yes. <laughs> Grace. <laughs> <laughs> so I read that a year or two ago. It's one of the first indie pieces I read, but yeah, I, I love it. It's great. So everyone should go check that one out. <laughs> yes. That, that was one of those short stories that I originally got because I thought the art was beautiful on the cover. I was like, oh, it's a dude with a hood. Like, this is cool. <laughs> Yeah. And then I started reading it was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. So if anybody out there hasn't read it, you need to because it's really good. <laughs> good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then obviously I'm seconding all the PFW stuff. The Lake of Living Water is incredible. Um, I love The Government Man by you, Beth. It's <laughs> so good. And I can't wait for the second one. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Echo by C. Scott Frank is just a really cool, um, great example of uh, using some tropes in just a really um, masterful way. I really like that. Um, and then, obviously, I don't, I might have already said this, but all the anti hero stories, so good. <laughs> I'm so proud of us, guys. 
Um, and I think one of the first short stories I ever read, or at least the first one that kind of got me thinking about how cool short stories were, was The Yellow Wallpaper by, I always get her name wrong, it's Charlotte Perkins Gilman or Charlotte Gilman Perkins, I'll link it below, but it, that story is so weird, um, but just incredible, and it has a lot of really cool themes to it, and it's one of those stories, the more you read it, the more things you notice, and that's really impressive to me, considering how short it is. Um, so that's that's one of my favorites. Also, as I mentioned before, the Velt. Um, also, you can read it like five times and get a new thing out of it each time. It's really <laughs> cool. So that's Bradbury for you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to that up. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I think it's five pages. You could read it in like 10, 15 minutes. It's great. Yeah. So I think that's all of my short story recommendations. So you all, I hope you guys were taking notes when we were talking about this because they're all so good. <laughs> so everybody just go read them and then come like talk to us about them because obviously we're very passionate about this. So if you want to come and be like, we read one of the short stories you mentioned, we'll all be super excited. So. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's actually the end of our discussion segment, unless anybody had some final words regarding short fiction. Oops. All right. So we can then give more story recommendations. This is our book club <laughs> segment. Um, so right now I'm actually reading Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston, and it's so good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Star Wars books for me always tend to either be really good or really bad. So this is a really good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Nate Philbrick loves that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I haven't read a ton of Star Wars. Maybe if I do, I should pick up that one. Yes, it's really good. So I'm reading that. I've been reading a bunch of random Captain Marvel comics. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of The Life of Captain Marvel by margaret stoll and it's really cool it's got some good backstory information on her um i just started season two episode two of the raven tree society by j.e parazzi that's her horror Mm -hmm. short story slash novella short fiction it's really good (laughs) (laughs) um and then like i mentioned today because gifted came out i'm also going to read that today i'm really excited so (laughs) <laughs> and that is all I'm reading this month. Um, I'm I the only one I have left to finish of Antiheroes is Striker, which I'm super Ooh. excited for. <laughs> I can't wait. I've, I've been waiting. No. <laughs> Grace has been like tweeting her, her reactions to all of them and she's like cruising through them and I feel like two weeks ago she just stopped right before Striker and I was like, Oh my goodness. She's gonna make her wait and wait. Wait. <laughs> I, felt so I got stuck with editing. I'm like, no. I love Striker too. I for, sometimes I forget about it and I'm like, oh yeah, I wrote that. It was fun. <laughs> That's a good feeling. I love that feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm hoping to get back to that one soon. And uh then I'm also listening to The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio, which is very strange, but a lot very interesting. <laughs> and I'm rereading Works of Love by Soren Kierkegaard, which is really good. And then I just have a stack of Wonder Woman comic books that I've been working through too. So nice. that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I love the I love the spectrum there. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of weirdness. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Um, I am reading uh, Healers and Warriors by Daily Downing, which is the third book in her. Uh, YA fantasy series. It's very fun and whimsical and very unique and, and creative, which I enjoy about it. And then I just finished um, Doom Messiah by Frank Herbert. <laughs> and I, I tend to write a review very soon because I have lots of thoughts. Um, so I read Dune in high school and then I'd read it several times. So I never continued the series. So now I'm trying to continue the series. So Dune Messiah is done, and then I have Children of Dune next, but I'm not sure I'm going to go straight into it. Might wait a bit, but Frank Kirby, very interesting writer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's a really good natural storyteller, but like his thoughts and concepts and ideas are like are just kind of mind blowing, and and they're like they're hidden so 
deep in there because sometimes the prose is really thick that you're like, what the heck is he talking about? (laughs) (laughs) You're like, oh, what? (laughs) I like that it's so different from uh, almost all the other sci-fi I read. So it really gets my creative juices and like conceptual science fiction kind of flowing in in a unique way. So anyway, yep, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right so that is the end of our podcast Woo-hoo. so you can find us on phoenixfictionwriters.com and follow us on twitter at phoenix underscore fiction we're also on facebook and youtube and itunes so if you like this podcast give us a thumbs up on youtube uh leave us a review on itunes we really appreciate that And also, always leave us comments anywhere you can. Tell us what you thought of this podcast. Tell us about your favorite short stories. We're always excited to hear from you. Um, And then, just as a reminder, April's podcast is on character development, tips and tricks with Janelle Garrett and Nate Philbrick. So you got to stay tuned for that, because that's going to be fun. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, Grace, where can we find you online? I'm at Krasny Degritsa on Twitter, and that's K-R-A-S-N-E-T-I-G-R-I-T-S-A, and also at gracecrandallauthor.wordpress.com, which is Sleepy Tiger Stories. (laughs) What about you, Beth? Um, yeah, on Twitter, uh, my handle is at E.B. Dawson Writing, and my website is www.ebdawsonwriting.com, and that's where my blog is, and all my books are on the homepage. So, yeah, you can pretty much get anywhere else from there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you can find me at underscore Hannah Heath on Twitter, and my website is hannahheathwriter.com, where you can also find all my other things, so be sure to do that. Um, And as a reminder, Grace Crandall's website is linked below where you can find all of her awesome short stories. So be sure to check that out. Follow her online. She's super cool. So go say hi. (laughs) Sure. All right. So thank you, everybody, for listening. And thank you, Beth and Grace, for the awesome conversation. Now I just want to write all the short stories. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for hosting us, Hannah. My pleasure. Okay. Bye.